I'll start with a quick review for this book, Alchemy. I'll give this book four out of five. If there's some interesting data here. I'm not necessarily agreeing with everything it has to say here, but definitely some food for thought, some good ideas, some marketing techniques, and I learned some things out of this book. If you're, it's not only about alchemy, but I like the main premise of the book, which is sometimes we need to think about different ways to solve problems, and some of the ways are not logical. We are only like, we praise logic too much, sometimes in figuring out solutions, and some of the some of the solutions are not logic. But we'll, we'll go through that in the review sections, in the note section, let's see. Using logic will result in logical solutions. Oftentimes we need psychological solutions. We always look in, that's what I start talking about, we always look for the logical solution, but oftentimes we need psychological solution, and this is not always logical. We often left with logic proof problems that silly solutions could help. Because what happened is all the solutions that logic helps, or we already solve them. We only left with the solutions that are logic proof because we couldn't solve it with logic. And to those problems, silly solutions could help. Like in evolution, we don't need to explain why it might work. We don't, like evolution, we don't always need to explain why it works because it worked. That was good for the environment, also for a solution sometimes. We don't need to explain why it works. It just works. We do not live in a rational world. Our four rational solutions would not always work. That's what I, I said before. Rational solutions are not always working, especially when we're living in an irrational world. Not always rational. Asking a dumb question such as why do people hate to stand on a train could yield interesting answers. Sometimes we think we know the answers, but we need to ask that question, even though it sounds very stupid. Of course, it's like, oh, no one would like to stand. But there are many other reasons for why people do not like to stand on the train. And figuring out why do not people don't like to stand on the train could help because sometimes it could be like lowering the price. They feel like they're not paying, they're paid for a, a seat and they don't have a seat, things like that. He's talking about it a little more, but asking those questions are important. The uncertainty when waiting for a technician is the issue, not the duration. Similar problem to the train thing. Why do people hate to wait for that technician? One of the main reasons is the uncertainty, not the weight itself. That's what they figured out. It's hard to explain to someone that their job is depending on it, when their job is dependent on it. Uber and cabs, for example. So it's really hard to explain to someone why their job, for example, is not needed when their job is dependent on it, or something about their job when their job is dependent on it. For example, Uber and cabs drivers. It's really hard to explain to those people why there is an issue. The answer to question, questions of why people go to the doctor is not so obvious. It's not only because they're sick, sometimes it's because assurance or something to fuss about. Again, it's a similar question that it's good to ask. Why do people like going to the doctor? It's not always because an illness, they, they have some sickness. Sometimes they want assurance or they want something to fuss about. Apparently people need that. When product has a visual change, the public is more likely to feel, and I capitalize the feel, the difference. The reason I capitalize the feel is because they can feel the difference, even though sometimes there is no difference. So even if there is a difference, they wouldn't feel it if the package would not change or the visual, uh, they wouldn't change the visual. So visual change helps people feel the difference. In some situations, one times 10 is not the same as 10.1. And I will continue to the next one because it's the same thing. Or it's actually not the same, but I, I thought about it. I wrote not a, something similar, but let's see. So in some situations, 10, so in a, in a, in a, 
the perfect example for that would be if one person chooses 10 people or 10 people choose one person, it's not gonna be the same answers. And we need to know that in advance because for example, 10 people that choose one person would probably yield better results. For example, for job interviews. So you need to know the difference between one choosing one times 10 to 10 times one is not always the same. Even though you would think math mathematically is the same thing, but sometimes it's not. Designing cockpit for the average man is hard since there is no person that meets all 10 averages. And that's kind of interesting. That's why I had this uh, number sign because Designing a cockpit for the average person is actually, they figured out that there is no average person because average person is like a specific height, a specific waist side and a specific uh, leg size. But a, a person that answer or meets the criteria of all 10 things, well, I don't know it was 10, but to meets all, all requirements, there is no such person. Therefore, it doesn't fit anyone. So we need to figure out what, what measurements would fit the most people and not the average. According to one theory, reasoning developed to explain ourselves to others in the social world. That's why we, we have reasoning in the first place because we need to explain ourselves to others because we live in a social world. Therefore, we develop that reasoning. Regardless to rationality, Discounted tickets not always lead to more sales. We always, economic models always tell us lower prices leads more, leads to more sales, but this is not always the case. In some situations, higher prices lead to more sales. When someone invested ample time into something, they're less likely to cheat. So that's when, if you want to know, like reputation is, in, in other words, is reputation. If someone invests in ample time and it means that they care about it and they're less likely to cheat. And this is how we are more likely to find someone with better products or a better, like for example, going to a garage when they, they're more likely to give you better results. There are two types of businesses, one that exploit one time customers and one that creates trust and rely on repeated customers. So two types of strategies in some way. One of them exploit one time customers and they don't care about reputation necessarily. And that one relies solely or not solely, but mostly on reputation and they rely on repeated customers. We can only influence our free will indirectly because we don't have that's his idea. We don't have directly access to it. We're just indirectly because we know what we want. And then therefore indirectly, we can influence it. One of the uses of dishwasher is to store filthy dishes out of sight. So this is one of the uses uh, that is counterintuitive. People think it's just the washing dishes. No, actually people don't want to see dishes in the sink pile up. And one of the uses for a dishwasher is a storing machine or a storing place for dirty dishes. Of course, obviously to wash them too, but that's another use for that. Having a swimming pool allow you to walk us outside with swimming suit and not to look like an idiot. Many people that have a swimsuit, uh, not a, a swimming pool would not necessarily swim in it. But if you walk around in your uh, backyard with a swimsuit and you don't have a swimming pool, you look like an idiot. Therefore people like, they just want to get tan, but you're not going to get tan just if you don't have a swimming pool. So if you have a swimming pool, you look like less like an idiot. Grooming is an act of self placeboing to convince ourselves. Sometimes when we groom, we feel more, we feel better about ourselves, but it's a self placeboing because this is not really changing anything much, but we feel like it does. And it's a self placeboing and we're convinced ourselves we look better. If someone cares about their reputation, they are less likely, they're more likely to be honest. So it's the same thing about the garage thing. If they care about their reputation, they're more likely to be honest. If we, we should go to like a garage, for example, or any other buy a car from someone that they care about their reputation. 
We don't taste water in order to better distinguish when the quality is bad. I don't know where he came from. Uh, he came up with this, but I like the idea of it. Not, not, if, even if it's wrong, uh, we don't taste the taste of water because it could have taste, for example, but we don't taste because we really need to know when the quality is bad and there is some contaminant in the water. Therefore, we really don't taste the water uh, when we're more likely to taste when something is wrong. Selling, selling a product can hurt the brand's reputation. They face a conundrum whether to lose the product or lose customers. So it's a serious conundrum there. If they have a bad product, I think it happened to Samsung. And the question, what do you do? Do you lose the money? You could even, sometimes a company could invest millions and millions of dollars on, on a product and it's not good. What do you do? You lose, you, you throw it out or you lose customers because you, you put it on the market and people do not like it and you lose some customers. It's a big question. Life decisions are more complicated than mathematical models. Some mathematical models, even though they're, they're very complicated, but they're less complicated than life decisions because there is uncertainty and unknown factors and or there is too many. Men were reluctant to order cocktails due to uncertainty in regard to the served cup. Showing pictures could help solve the issue. Apparently, some men do not like order cocktails because they don't want to get the cocktail in a cup that is feminine. Some cups are considered feminine. Therefore, knowing or showing a picture of which cup it comes with could help um, sell more cocktails for men. Defensive decision making is what we do when we are not being economical and just trying to dodge the blame. So that's, there's a name for it, defensive decision making. Some, many times it happens in companies when you don't want to take the blame. So you're not being economical, you're not being efficient, you're just doing whatever is needed to dodge the blame. And this is obviously not a good decision making. Packaging can change the taste of the product, similar to the idea of when you change the product, the more likely to feel it. And here, just, just the packaging can change the taste of the product. Sales are better strategy than lower prices all the time, all the time. This is one of, the th one of them that I not necessarily agree with, but if you have a sale on a product, and instead of 100, you, you get it for 70 or something like that, it sells better than just a product for 70. People like to see that there is a discount. And I don't fully agree with that because we have like uh, places like Walmart, Trader Joe's that they always have lower price every day. They have that thing and they don't have sales and they're actually selling pretty good. So I don't know. Could, I'm sure some, sometimes it works, but in other places it doesn't. Photographing food before eating could be the equivalent of making a blessing, both intended to make the food more special. <laughs> Interesting connection right there. Photographing, maybe people are photographing the food and he equivalent that to uh, blessing the food before because the, both have the same fundamental ideas of ad not admiring the food, but uh, making the food more special or being thankful for the food. And it's interesting uh, connection. Knowing where our taxes go would make it easier for people to pay and be happy with it. People want to know what happened with their money and telling them this is what happened with your tax money helps. Uh, I think I'm seeing some places around here that your tax money is, is something in work, something like that. I see all kinds of signs around, I think for roads mostly or for sidewalks, parks maybe. So I think some people are implementing this idea. And we have the last one. The job of an alchemist is to check which framing works the best. Which way is the best way to sell, not sell, but to frame, <laughs> frame the product and or frame an idea. So that's the job of an alchemist. So again, some interesting ideas in this book. Writing style could be, uh, could be improved, but that's why I didn't get a five stars. 
but definitely like some of his ideas and again some food for thought that's why that's the main idea main point so i definitely recommend reading this and thank you